Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost. Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the solo stamina night blade. This build is absolutely nutty, this patch, and it's looking great. It feels good, and we've made some minor changes to make it even better now that things have settled down and the dust around the PTS has settled down, so we know what's coming. This build is going to be absolutely perfect for all solo content in the game. You will be able to solo absolutely anything. It's also going to be great for transitioning into group content, so I'll put a link in the description down below to the solo build and the group build and they're going to be very similar. So it's going to be very easy to switch back and forth depending on what type of content that you're doing. So with all that out of the way, let's dive straight into the build. The first thing we're going to go over is the race. The race I recommend is Dark Elf. Dark Elf is great because they can do mag and stam just fine. It's also got high stam values, high mag values, which makes it great in this hybrid meta that we are living in right now in ESO. Great alternatives to Dark Elf are going to be Orc, Khajiit, and Wood Elf. Those are all going to be perfect if you want to use any of those as well. As for the Mundus, I'm going to highly recommend you go with lover while soloing it's going to give you penetration which you dearly need while you're soloing the fastest way to lose damage is to under pen penetration if you don't know it's going to cut through the enemy's resistances if they have way more resistances than you have penetration your damage is getting mega throttled right so you don't want that to happen in group content it's not really a problem because of all the buffs and debuffs from tanks and healers but in solo content you desperately need it so take lover for the extra penetration and then when you're doing group content or if you settle into group content for a while feel free to switch your Mundus over to Thief. It's free. You can switch it anytime you want to. It's one of those things you can do anytime you need. But Lover is the safe bet for solo and disorganized group play. As for the attributes, go ahead and put all 64 points into stamina. This is going to give you the most damage possible and the most sustain possible. As for the consumables, we're going to be using Lava Foot Soup. This is going to give you 5,000 max stam, 500 stamina recovery. So it's going to be great for your damage because your damage is in part based on how much stamina you have. The more stamina you have, the more damage every build you cast does right so it's, it's in the formula there that's all you really need to know without overcomplicating it and then as for potions whenever you're doing easy content questing overland content you know stuff that feels pretty easy go ahead and use the trash potions as we call them they're the little green ones essence of stamina they drop off of mobs you can also pick them up at guild traders for next to nothing just big stacks of them the important thing is that you're getting in the habit of using potions constantly while you're in combat it's going to be a really good habit to develop because potions are mega important in ESO when you're doing something difficult then go ahead and slot those essence of weapon power potions these are going to give you major brutality which is going to increase your damage by 20 percent they're also going to give you major savagery which is going to increase your crit chance as well as major endurance which is going to increase your stamina regen so you want all those buffs they're all very very powerful and they will make your character substantially stronger so when you're doing veteran content when you're doing solo arenas like maelstrom arena or vodron halls arena it's going to be a good time to you know spring for that more expensive potion put that on and it will feel great all right next up let's go over the gear Gear. For the gear, we've slightly changed around the starter gear and the dungeon gear based on the way things are shaking out in the PTS and the patch and everything. So for the starter gear, this is gear that you don't need a trial for or anything like that. I'm going to recommend that you put Venomous Smite on the body. That's going to be your chest, your legs, your boots, your pants and your gloves, right? You're going to put Venomous Smite there. This is going to be great for giving you crit damage and some extra poison proc damage. And for the jewelry and front bar, you're going to go ahead and use Orders Wrath. Order's Wrath is real easy to get. It's a set you can either craft yourself or a set you can go to like any guild trader and pick it up by like the green or the blue ones or maybe the purple if you really want to spend more money, but you don't need to at all. I wouldn't go beyond purple for sure. Definitely don't get gold. It's a waste of money because you're going to upgrade past this as soon as you're able to. This is kind of a placeholder set. It's a nice five piece set that does really good damage. But as soon as you're able or willing to go into some DLC dungeons, there is something that's going to be a little bit better and you can farm this as well. So that's your starter sets. That's the sets you'll wear if you don't have access to DLC content, even though this stuff comes from DLC zones. If you don't have DLC zones, you can go to a guild trader and just buy it outright or even as a base game player, right? That's the best part about it. As for the dungeon sets, if you're willing to run dungeons, we're going to keep Venomous Smite on the body. That's a great set. It's doing great damage. We'll leave it there and then we'll replace the crafted set or just wrath, right? We're going to replace that with Pillar of Nern on the jewelry and the front bar. 
As for the back bar, we're gonna run Maelstrom Two-Handed Greatsword. This is a really powerful greatsword. It's got a nice proc condition, it's easy, and it works perfectly with our Stampede that we're gonna be running anyway. So it's just really nice and it feels really good. And if you're willing to do Trials, then you've got a couple of options. You're gonna replace Venomous Smite with either Relican, if you want to light attack stack and get a high single target damage, or Coral Riptide, if you don't wanna have to worry about having perfect light attack weaving and you you just want a set that's it'll be real easy to kind of just proc constantly just by having low or lowish stamina coral riptide performs best when you're around like 33 stamina and rally is going to perform best if you're light attack weaving really well so they both have their pros their cons and like the little bit of maintenance that you need to do and they're both going to work perfectly well as for your mythic you're definitely going to want to run ring of the power order this is what's going to make your health bounce right back to full anytime something hits you or you take damage ring of the power order is going to bring 20 percent of the damage you deal to the enemies back into you as health that's really powerful and you should get it as soon as you can if you're able to if you're not able to then you're just gonna have to do more vigoring and you know that's the self-heal that you'll be using a lot to keep yourself alive and for the monster set we're going to recommend storm fist storm fist has a really nice one piece bonus that gives you stamina recovery that stamina recovery is going to feel really good when you're a new player or a low level player without a ton of champion points and without a ton of passives already your sustain is going to be a bit more difficult right so this will really help with the sustain and if you do happen to wear the two piece storm fist because you don't have a mythic yet it hits really hard that fist comes out of the ground grabs the enemies it's one of the hardest hitting monster sets in the game so doubly beneficial both the one piece and the two piece bonus very nice if you're running the ring of the power order you're only going to be taking advantage of that one piece which is totally okay because ring of the power order is worth it I promise you that covers the gear. So now let's dive into the skills. The first skill we're going to talk about is twisting path. Twisting path is a nice, massive rectangular dot that you put on the ground in front of you. It's 15 meters. Definitely want to use this dot. It's also going to give you major expedition, increasing your movement speed by 30% for four seconds after leaving it. And it's going to put out a really nice, massive dot damage. So it's just a really good skill. Definitely one you want to take advantage of when you're playing a Nightblade. It's, it's really hard to pass it up. The next one is going to be surprise attack. This is going to be our spammable. The spammable is really nice because not only does it do really good damage, if you strike an enemy from their flank, it's going to set them off balance. And this attack can also be guaranteed to be a critical strike up to once every four seconds. So you're getting extra crits. You're doing really good damage with it. It's 9,366 unbuffed damage. Also, by using this as your spammable, you're constantly proccing major resolve, which is giving you extra 6,000 resistances, which means it's incredibly difficult for you to die. You're going to take way less damage if you're using this as your spammable. The next thing we're going to talk about is Killer's Blade, one of the best, if not maybe the best execute. Wow, it's one of the best executes in the game, and it hits really hard. So when something gets below 25% health, you're going to start using this on it, and it's going to do 400% more damage to that enemy while they're missing health. It's also going to heal you for 8,600 if the enemy dies within two seconds of you using this on it. And the enemy will die within two seconds of you using this because this is the skill you're using to kill the enemy. So it's massive damage and a massive heal. Next, we've got Barb Trap. Barb Trap is a fighter's guild ability, so it's really nice because it's doing three different things for us, right? It's one of the hardest hitting single target dots in the entire game, so we use it for that reason. It's also going to give us Minor Force, which is a buff that increases our critical damage by 10% whenever we land this skill on an enemy. So it's a massive dot, it's a massive buff. And then it's also going to be a bar buffer, which means just by having it slotted, there's passives that play in the Fighter Skilled skill line that are gonna make you do more damage and get more ult regen just because it's here. Even if you never touched it, you're still getting those two things. And so it's just a really nice ability for those three reasons. Next, we have Relentless Focus. This is the the semi spammable of the Nightblade. You want to you fire this off basically any time that you're able to, which is going to be after every fifth or sixth light attack. So basically every time you light attack, this ability is going to get a charge. And when you get five of these charges, you're going to be able to fire it off for massive damage, massive damage, like 20,000 damage. It's huge damage. You want to make sure you're using it. And then as soon as you fire it off, and you light attack again, it'll start collecting those next five charges and then fire it off again. You're going to be able to cast this about, let's see, twice per ultimate. Basically, that's going to be a nice, easy rhythm to maintain. So you'll fire it off and then you'll get your ultimate. So you'll get your you'll use your ultimate incapacitating strike. It's going to do massive burst damage. And then it's also going to give you a 20 percent damage buff for six seconds. So after you use this skill, you do 20 percent more damage. That's huge. That's a massive damage buff, right? So this is your hardest hitting ability. So what you want to try to do is use Relentless Focus after you use Incapacitating Strike. So you want to 
fire off those five charges, right, that you built up after you get a 20% damage boost for six seconds. So you'll use your ultimate and then you'll fire off your relentless focus. Then you'll get five stacks and then you'll fire it off once without an ultimate because it won't be ready yet. And then you'll get five more stacks. Your ultimate will be ready again because it is a really cheap ult at 70. This is one of the great things about this ult. You get it really fast, right? And then you'll fire off relentless focus again right after your ult. So you, you do uh, ultimate relentless focus, relentless focus, ultimate relentless focus. Rel that's kind of like the rotation of those two skills, right? Uh, that's how the timing kind of works out once you get into the groove, into the rhythm. The other great things about this incapacitating strike that make it really hard to pass up is one, there's a class passive at play that we'll touch on when we get to the passives. That's really powerful, makes it worth having slotted on both bars. Also, if you cast this with 120 ultimate or more, you stun the enemy for three seconds and that'll actually happen on accident probably kind of frequently because 120 ult charge isn't that much it's not that much past 70 and so it, you just naturally get that pretty fast so and it does feel good it feels good to stun these enemies for three seconds especially the thick boys that you're using this ultimate on and use this ultimate liberally like use it all the time it's not like other classes where you save it for this epic moment like you're gonna get it so fast that you need to use it the important thing is that you use it every time there's a thick mob nearby and certainly on bosses the other thing the ultimate does is while slotted you gain reeve which restores 100 magicka and stamina when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack on an enemy with a negative effect on them so enemies are always going to have negative effects on them around you so you're always going to be getting these extra resources when you attack them which is great for your sustain next the back bar stampede stampede is a gap closer it does massive damage in an area around the enemy that you hit putting a massive dot on all the enemies in that area and it's also procking your maelstrom weapon that you're using on the back bar which is applying a massive bleed dot to the enemy so it's applying a bleed dot from your weapon that you're wearing and then it's also going to be applying a massive dot from the skill itself and it's also a gap closer so it's fun and it's incredibly effective i love this skill next we have carve carve is also another skill that's doing lots of things for you one it's a conal aoe right it's putting a massive bleed on everything that's you know in a cone in front of you then it's also going to be giving you a shield when you hit an enemy. So if you or actually, you don't even need to hit an enemy. You can just <laughs> you can swing it into the air and you give yourself a nice little shield for uh, about 6000 damage, which is going to be roughly like a third to a quarter of your health. So that's fantastic. It's a nice shield. The most interesting thing about this ability is it has something very unique, and that is if you use it the first time you cast it, it's going to have a duration of 12 seconds. But if you cast it again before it falls off so if there's like one or two seconds left in the dot it adds 10 seconds so it'll do 12 second duration plus 10 seconds so 22 second duration on the second cast and then 32 second duration on the third cast right it's adding 10 seconds to that 12 second duration each time you cast it without letting it run off so the first time you use it it'll be a 12 second dot then the second time you use it, it will be 22 second dot and the third time you use it, it will be a 32 second dot. And that's where it caps out. Every time you use it after that, it'll be 32 seconds. It won't go higher than that. The important thing is that you always recast it when there's like one or two seconds left, right? Because you don't want it to fall off because you're basically getting three dot casts for the price of one when it's running at 32 second duration. Feels really good. Next, we have Resolving Vigor. Resolving Vigor is uh, the, probably the, so the strongest self heal in the entire game. It's going to heal you for about 20,000 health over five seconds that's huge it's also going to give you minor resolve at the same time for free for 20 seconds giving you 3,000 resistances approximately right so that's huge resistances on top of a massive heal it's going to make you a thick boy and it's going to make you a lot harder to kill next we have razor caltrops razor caltrops is a massive massive aoe dot it does good damage but the important thing about it is that it's going to apply major breach to all enemies in that circle major breach is going to reduce their resistances by six thousand. if you don't know what that means it just means basically like everything in that circle is going to take way more damage from you than they otherwise would have and so you want to make sure you get this dot down it's going to make it everything that you hit in that circle is going to be taking way more damage than they otherwise would be it's also going to slow enemies in the circle by 50 percent, which is nice it makes it real easy to kind of kite them and unload damage on them while they melt inside of all the dots that you've got laid down in that circle it makes it very easy to play this character very safely and next we have dark shade dark shade's great because it's doing a few things one it's uh it's proccing one of our class buffs which we'll get into in a moment 
two, it's great single target damage, and three, it's great AoE damage also. You cast this, and then he just runs around. It's like a little shadow of you, and he will occasionally do a spinning attack, which does AoE damage, so he's single target. He's also AoE, and he's going to inflict Minor Maim, which reduces the enemy's damage done by 5% for four seconds, so it's debuffing the enemy at the same time. Just a great ability. And then finally, our ult on the back bar. We're not going to use this back here. We're always going to use it on the front bar. And it's one of the very rare times where we put the same ult on the back as the front. And it's because the passives attached to this ultimate are so good, right? There's class passives that are giving us buffs. There's also the buffs that are listed on the skill, which give you extra resource regeneration and all this stuff. So it's just really, it's just a hard one to not put on your bar, even as a bar buffer. Now for the rotation of those skills that we just went over, you're going to start by pre-buffing. So you're going to cast first you're gonna cast your relentless focus because this is a 60 second buff it's really long it's a set it and forget it one so get it up get it going then next thing you're gonna do is go back to your back bar and dark shade get this guy up he's a 22 second dot basically right he runs around attacking things for you now you've got your two things up that you can cast without ever touching the enemy now we're gonna start in with our dots so just stampede to the enemy as your gap closer wail on him with one carve and throw your caltrops on so now all your back bar dots are going right keeps it very simple you just go left to right then you go to the front bar you throw down your twisting path you throw down your barb trap now all your dots and all your buffs and all your debuffs right everything's ticking so it's time to do surprise attack and you're going to use surprise attack until you have relentless focus fully charged up and you're going to fire that off right every time you do five light attacks so about every five abilities you're going to be firing off your relentless focus give or take sometimes you'll hold off on it for a second because your ultimate's about to be up and you want to cast it right after you cast your ultimate right and that's where the whole every other cast of relentless focus will follow your ultimate so you'll cast it once by itself then you'll cast it once right after your ultimate then you'll cast it once by itself and then that's about how it'll work out uh, and then the only other thing is like when the enemy starts getting low you'll use your execute ability which is killer's blade this is you know when the enemy starts getting close to around 25 percent down below 30 percent right you could start letting this rip and it's going to do massive damage to them you're going to replace your surprise attack as your spammable essentially that's what's happening here right so this is what's doing all of your damage to the enemy low below 25 percent you do not fire off relentless focus you're going to hold on to those charges because it increases your weapon and spell damage by 60 for each charge that you're sitting on it's the skill also heals you for 33 percent of the damage done so it's just it's just a giga skill man it's doing so many things not only is it doing so much damage it's also buffing your character until you fire it off it's also healing you when you fire it off right it's doing all of those things it's just a crazy powerful ability and that's why pretty much every single I played you ever see put together we'll be using that skill really good one all right now let's quickly go over the passives because the passives are what makes a class tick it's it's what decides what abilities we're using why we're using them when we're using them you know there's a lot going on with the passives and if you don't understand how the passives for the class work it can be really easy to accidentally just take an ability off not understanding that you're bricking your build or something like that okay so all right first up we've got master assassin increase your physical and spell penetration against enemies you're flanking by 3000 increases the duration of the stun from sneak by 100 so anytime you're behind an enemy so great for group play or great when you're circling an enemy in solo you're gonna get an extra bit of penetration which i told you earlier penetration very important next is executioner when an enemy dies within two seconds of being damaged by you you restore 1000 magicka and stamina great extra sustain extra resource regeneration is always good the next one we have is pressure point which increases your weapon and spell critical ratings by 438 for each assassin ability slotted so we've got 1300 extra crit that's huge and that's a large part of why we have so many class abilities on that front bar we're taking advantage of all that extra crit chance with an assassination ability slotted next one is hemorrhage and it says with increases your critical damage by 10 period right and this is why we have the ultimate on the back bar so that we can have this passive on the back bar just a flat crit damage increase we also get from this passive dealing critical damage increases your oh it grants your group minor savagery increasing your weapon critical rating by 1300 so more crit chance just by dealing a crit so you crit anything and you give your whole group extra crit chance including yourself really nice okay for the shadow line we're gonna also be using this first passive which is gonna increase our health stamina and magic recovery by 15 percent that's good for all the obvious reasons listed next we have shadow barrier casting a shadow ability grants you major resolve for six seconds this is why your spammable surprise attack is giving you major resolve it's this passive 
that's causing that. It's going to increase your resistances by 6,000, right? So every time you use it, the duration is increased by 25% for each piece of heavy armor equipped. We don't have heavy armor, so that doesn't apply. Next, we've got Dark Vigor. Increases your max health by 3% for each shadow ability slotted. We've got two, so 6%. Next, we have Dark Veil. Increases the duration of your non-invisibility based shadow abilities by two seconds. It just increases the duration of abilities. We see uh, there's a few of these like ones like this are super under like just like, why didn't you just make the pass the, 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 the dots last two seconds longer if that's how you're going to balance them? But, you know, whatever. Grab the passive. You need to have it. Next, we have Catalyst. After drinking a potion, you gain 20 ultimate. Great, dude. This is one of the reasons why you have your ult so fast. 20 ultimate is almost one third of what you need to fire off your ultimate. So every time you use a potion, which you're doing every 45 seconds, you're getting one third of your ult charge back, right? So your ult is going to be going off constantly on this class. Magic Flood increases your max magic by 8% while a siphoning ability is slow. Slotted. We are not actually using a siphoning ability on this one because we don't need the max mag because this is a stam version and all of our damage is scaling off of our stamina anyway. Next, we have Soul Siphoner. Increases your healing down by 3% for each siphoning ability slotted. We're not doing this, so it doesn't matter. Transfer. Casting a siphoning ability while in combat generates two ultimate. This effect can occur once every four seconds. So this is where sometimes it can be nice to find a reason to slot something like cripple or siphoning strikes or something like that. So you get uh, you get a little bit of extra ult regen, which is nice, but it's by no means critical for the build and it's perfectly fine without it, especially on the stem variant. So I wouldn't stress this too much. Next, we're gonna grab the two-handed weapon passives, mainly because we're using a two-hander on the back bar. Things to note about the two-hander is that your light and heavy attacks hit three enemies near your target for 100% of the damage that you do to the main target with all your light and heavy attacks, right? So not your abilities, just your light and heavy attacks are going to be cleaving. And also because you're using a sword, you're getting a 284 extra spell and weapon damage. It's nice. That's why we chose the sword over the other things. And the other passives are just going to increase your your damage with the weapon and your your sustain with the weapon right so they're they're nice to have same for dual wield we're gonna grab these because we're running dual wield on the front bar and the main passive here to be aware of is twin blade and blunt which says each dagger you use increases your critical chance by 812 so about 1600 extra crit chance which is a ton just for using daggers instead of like maces or swords on your dual wield and so that's why we always tend to choose dual daggers. Then other things here are just going to be, again, they're going to be increasing your damage and things like that and sustained by cause you're using daggers. Light armor, grab all the passives because we are going to be using a light helmet on this build to increase our penetration. And then medium armor, we're going to be using all medium other than that one piece. So grab all these passives. These are going to do things like increase your critical damage, increase your stamina recovery, reduce the cost of abilities. They're going to improve your sneak, reduce your detection radius, right? Increase your weapon and speed. Spell damage by 2% for each piece worn. These are massive buffs. Your armor buffs are so big. They're so important. Make sure you grab them sooner than later, okay? Because they're very powerful. Next, we're going to go to Fighter Skill, and we're going to grab the first four passives. The first one is Intimidating Presence. This is an, an RP passive and a combat passive, both in one, because one half of this passive is going to make it so that when you're doing a quest, you can intimidate the enemy and basically skip some tedious part of the quest sometimes. You're going to be able to do that. And the other half of this passive reduces the cost of your fighter skilled abilities so that you, when you use them, they cost less. So that barb trap where you're going to be using, it's going to cost 15% less. Very nice for your sustain. Next, we have Slayer, which is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 3% for each fighter skilled ability slotted. 3% bonus is great for your damage. Nice, we'll take it. Banish the Wicked. This is a huge one. This is why we always have at least one fighter skilled ability slotted so that we get that three ultimate whenever we kill any enemy. Three ultimate. Boom. Really important for getting your ult back and getting it back fast. And then finally, Skilled Tracker, which is going to increase your fighter skilled abilities damage by 10%. Very nice to have. It doubles against players like vampires and werewolves, right? So very nice to have. Use this. Use these four. Uh, next, we have Undaunted Passives. We're going to grab both of these. These are going to be good for your sustain and your resource values. The first one, basically, whenever you use the synergy, it's going to give you 850 health, 1200 stamina, 500 magic, right? So you're getting all your resources back every time you grab anybody's synergy. Very nice for sustain, especially in group content. Then we have Undaunted Metal, which says for each type of armor you're wearing, light, medium, or heavy, you're going to be getting 2% extra of all your resources. So we have medium and light. That's two times 2%. We get 4% bonus of all our resources just because we have this passive. So we grab it. Next, we have Assault. We're definitely going to grab Continuous Attack because this is going to make you move 30% faster all the time. Anytime you're on your mountain, just free 30% move speed. This used to be a skill that you actually had to cast. They changed it into a passive that you have all the time. Amazing change. 
and definitely one you want to have. You can get this ability without doing any PvP. Just go to Cyrodiil, do the zone story quest in that zone. You do it in a safe area where nobody could attack you even if they wanted to, and you just knock it out. It takes like five minutes. Don't skip the ballista training because if you do, you're only going to be level two. You won't get the passive and you'll have to go do a battleground or something to get to level three. Not a big deal, but you know, you could save yourself that hassle just by making sure that when you get the option to skip ballista training, you don't do it. Next, we have our racial passives. Grab all of those. And then finally, last but not least, medicinal use. Grab all three of these levels. This is going to increase the duration of your potions. So by default, potions last 35 seconds. With this passive maxed out, they last 45 seconds. Actually, they last 47 seconds. The cooldown for potions is 45. So your potions will last two seconds longer than the cooldown, which means you can have 100% uptime on Major Brutality, which is 20% increased damage, Major Savagery, which is uh, extra crit chance, and uh, your Major Endurance, which is your 30% increased stamina regen, right? You can have 100% uptime on all those buffs. Those are massive buffs. Very important to have this passive. So grab it when you can. And that's it. That's all the passives for the Stamina Nightblade. This class is an insane class. It's a fun class. And it's got so, so much identity. It's it's definitely one of the favorites. Every single patch when I put this build out, people love it. So I hope you do too. The only other thing to go over is the champion points, which are going to be in the written guide linked in the description below, because it's just a lot easier for you to follow the list in the written guide. And by the way, if the written guide has any discrepancies or if it deviates from the video build, the written guide is always the most up to date. That's always the most up to date version of the build because I can go in there. If Zoss nerfs something overnight, I can go to there and just change the uh, the skill or I can change the piece of gear, right? It's a lot easier to update the written guide than it is make an entire new video. So sometimes if there's a very minor tweak to the build, I'll go in there and I'll min max it for you guys. And uh, the written guide might be slightly different from the video, usually not very much at all, though. So if you follow the video instead of the written guide, it's not a big deal. It's still going to be great. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, if you found it helpful, please, please give it a like and a thumbs up and a comment and all that good stuff for the algorithm. YouTube loves it when you guys do that. And so do I. If you really want to support the channel in a big way, become a YouTube member. There's a link to become a member down in the description below. Join and you get things like behind the scenes footage. You get a unique Discord channel that only the members have access to and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So it's just something you guys can do if you want to support the channel. If you're not, no big deal. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you're not sure what to do next, maybe watch one of the videos popping up on screen right now.